As we all would probably know, aircraft carriers are vessels that act as a seagoing airbase and has a full-length flight deck as well as facilities for storing, preparing for deployment, and bringing back aircraft. However, they are frequently described as a city on water. Why? Well, essentially 6,000 people are spending a lot of time working, relaxing, eating, and sleeping on board. It might resemble a city, but not one where you can wander around with few or no restrictions, as you might on dry land. There are a few locations on an aircraft carrier that you might not be able to go to, regardless of whether you are a crew member, and one of these places is the flight deck. This leads us to the question, why are the majority of the Navy crew members unable to access the aircraft carrier's flight deck? Welcome to High Technology, the place where technology calls home. Join us as we venture in today's episode on why it is unsafe for crew members to be in the flight deck. If you are captivated with the topics of technology, then you should probably subscribe to our channel. And while you're still here, go ahead and smash that notification bell so that you'll be notified when we upload awesome videos like this. On an aircraft carrier, these are the most hazardous areas to work. Although the island's top levels are secure enough, few people can enter or exit at once because of delicate operations and a lack of accessible space. A seaman doing his work below deck can go for several days without seeing the sun. An aircraft carrier's flight deck serves as the platform from which its aircraft take off and land, like it's a tiny underwater airport. The flight deck is conceivably the riskiest place to work on Earth. The lives of the Navy crew members who work on that flight deck are in jeopardy of being hit by a propeller that has engine intake, ingestion ordnance explosion, fuel fire arrestor wires, cutting limbs, aircraft losing control, and other similar things. An airplane carrying 35,000 pounds makes a landing on the deck every 5 minutes or so. Flame heat, ear splitting noise, fumes, poisons, and danger are all present all the time. Strong winds, torrential rain, and a shaking deck are added on top of everything else. It's not a location that just anybody can visit. On a flight deck, deadly accidents have occasionally occurred. Burning is possible in some metals such as magnesium and phosphorus, which are employed in armament, can result in Delta-class fires. The first tragedy was an accident in 1967, when an F-4 Phantom unintentionally launched a Zuni missile, which led to a serious fire outbreak aboard the USS Forest. These metals have extremely high ignition temperatures and are notoriously challenging to extinguish once they start fire. 134 crew members perished as a result of the deck fire which raged for hours. Another incident occurred in March 2018 when a minor calculation error led to the breaking of an arresting cable. As soon as it touched down, an effort was made to retrieve an aircraft that had been lost. To everyone's relief, only 8 sailors sustained serious injuries during the incident. The pilot of an E-2C Hawkeye was able to avoid crashing the aircraft into the water just in the nick of time by avoiding a collision with the ocean. Due to the high level of concern over numerous accidents, Carrier flight deck crews are also provided with various simulations and exercises to develop a quick and effective response in the event of an emergency. However, even with that, the only people who have access to the flight deck area aboard an aircraft carrier are trained and professional Navy crewmen. On the flight deck, wearing a variety of shirts, different workers are performing different tasks. Their duties may range from signaling and refilling aircraft to keeping wires and catapults in working order. Each member of the crew works works very hard to make sure that each aircraft's landing and takeoff go well. The crew members on the flight deck are responsible for overseeing all operations while wearing yellow jerseys. These shirts are worn by the aircraft boat swains mate as part of their uniform. In addition to being responsible for regulating the flight of the aircraft, the aviation boat swains mates are also responsible for handling the flow of passengers. During flight operations, they are directly responsible for the safe handling and maneuvering of the aircraft, as well as the protection of all individuals. If you have any questions or concerns while on the flight deck, please approach the person in the yellow shirt. Crew members that wear yellow shirts have the additional duty of ensuring the well-being of any and all crew members who are present on the flight deck. In addition to assisting personnel in locating their way about the ship, yellow shirts are accountable for their safety. Therefore, it is necessary for them to have knowledge not only of their own professions, but also of those of everyone else. On the flight 
Light Deck, however, in addition to the guys who are dressed in yellow shirts, there are also crew members who are dressed in blue shirts. You might ask, what is their job? When an aircraft carrier first joins the boatswain's mates, they will wear a blue jersey to indicate that they are on a lower level than the other members. These sailors are typically more recent recruits who have not yet acquired the requisite credentials for their professions, such as chalking and chaining. When the aircraft is in the air, one of their primary jobs is to operate the tractors, elevators, and other aircraft that are attached to the aircraft. Being a blue shirt requires a significant amount of hard work. They put in a significant amount of effort each and every day. They are obligated to remain vigilant and prepared to carry out their responsibility as a result because they are in charge of the majority of the manual labor on the flight deck. Blue shirts are frequently smeared in grease and always carry something heavy in their hands, such as a chain tractor bar or a chalk. This is because they are in charge of the majority of the manual labor on the flight deck. During their time in the blue shirt, they are instructed on the ins and outs of properly commanding aircraft, establishing the groundwork for when they advance to the yellow shirt, which is reserved for high-performing pilots. They contribute significantly to the process of aircraft handling. In order for them to properly execute the tasks that are required of them, they need to pay careful attention to the particulars and have a debt of information. When a sailor wants to get their yellow shirt, they have to put in an exceptional amount of time and effort, both in terms of the amount of training they have to go through and the number of hours they have to put in working. This begs the question, how exactly does one become eligible to wear the yellow shirt? Sailors must become certified flight deck observers and master handling and directing in order to acquire a yellow shirt. All sailors must have it when they report to the Nimitz or any other aircraft carrier in addition to the qualifications. The process will take about 12 weeks to complete. The sailors must then pass an oral and written test that is given by the flight deck's leading petty officer or assistant LPO, as well as any extra yellow shirts, qualified chief petty officers, or first-class petty officers who choose to attend. Sailors undergo a training phase known as under inspection once they have earned the right to wear the yellow jersey on the flight deck. This suggests that in order to advance toward competence in their new function on the flight deck, they need the help of yellow shirts with more experience. An experienced mentor who pays close attention to each signal and choice made by the UI yellow shirts is always with them. The nuances of each circumstance determine how long the UI process takes. The method is merely there to make sure you fully understand what it is you're doing on the flight deck. Although it takes a lot of work, completing things like this allow you to shape your character and increase your understanding of the flight deck. The process is designed to mold you into a top-notch yellow shirt. Those in the yellow shirts are expected to communicate with the pilots and other crew members working on the flight deck by hand signals in order to maneuver aircraft onto the catapults and away from the landing area safely. You must demonstrate your ability to take on control of your aircraft and understand the pilot's directions. A close-knit group of men and women spend their time away from the oppressive heat talking, laughing, and preparing to launch a high-priced aircraft into the sky in the yellow shirt locker, also known as the crew room on the flight deck of the Nimitz. The working conditions for a yellow shirt are completely different from those of any other position on the ship. Here, where they have established a base of operations, the yellow shirts are preparing their minds to launch aircraft from their care. Career. While being the most dangerous place to work, a career on the flight deck of an aircraft carrier proved to be challenging. As a result, its personnel were able to demonstrate incredible bravery in the face of adversity. Only highly qualified personnel are permitted to perform their duties on the flight deck of an aircraft carrier, which is considered to be one of the most dangerous places to work in the Navy. This is to ensure that there is a little risk of injury as possible. Our query of why Navy crew members are never seen on the flight deck has been largely answered by this information. And there you have it folks, what do you think of today's episode? Be sure to like and leave a comment before you go. As always, thank you for watching and subscribe if you haven't already. Again, this is High Technology, see you guys on the next one.